Hello everybody, my name is Rui Grassa and I'm very happy to present to you this work that I have developed together with Toby Delbrook on unraveling the paradox of intensity dependent DVS pixel noise. First of all, let's go over an overview of what the DVS is and how its output is distorted by noise. Unlike a standard frame based camera, which outputs frames periodically independently of what's going on in the scene, DVS is an event based sensor which outputs a stream of events asynchronously in response to changes in relative light intensity in the scene. So only parts of the scene that change trigger events, and if the scene is static, ideally we expect no events at the DVS output. Let's now look at how the DVS output looks like in response to a scene like The DVS output consists of these red and green dots, in which the, the green dots are on events and they encode changes in relative, uh, positive changes in relative light intensity. And the red dots are off events, which encode negative changes in relative light intensity. We see that there are events in response to, um, to, to changes in the scene as expected, but we also see that parts of the scene that don't change are still triggering events. And if we make the scene static, we see that there's still some background activity going on, even though the scene is not changing. And it's also clear that parts of the scene that are darker trigger more of these events and parts of the scene that are brighter trigger less events and only on, on events. And if we make the scene darker by reducing the aperture, we see that there's a lot more of these noise events. However, measurements previously reported for the logarithmic photoreceptor, which is a, a precursor of the, the photoreceptor used in the DVS pixel, show power spectral densities, which when integrated, result in the same noise power. So this is a paradoxical result. And what, um, the main question that we explore in this work is why are there more noise events under low light intensity? To understand this, let's look first at how the DVS pixel works. The first stage of the DVS pixel is a logarithmic photoreceptor. It consists of a photodiode and MOS transistors operating in weak inversion. This causes the output voltage of the photoreceptor to be proportional to the logarithm of photocurrent. This voltage is then amplified by a change amplifier, which first follows the output of the photoreceptor, but is then compared to an on threshold by on comparator and to an off threshold by an off comparator. When the output of the change amplifier hits the on threshold, it generates an on event and it resets the output of the change amplifier. Then the output of the change amplifier keeps, change, keeps following the, the, photo, the photoreceptor output voltage until it hits the threshold again, triggers an event, resets again, and same thing when it hits the off threshold. This way, changes in relative light intensity in the scene are encoded to um, streams of on and off events. So far, the DVS photoreceptor has been modeled as a first order low pass system. This is because measurements reported for the logarithmic photoreceptor, which is a precursor for the photoreceptor used in the DVS pixel, show such behavior. Here we see the power spectral density for the logarithmic photoreceptor, which tells us how noise power is distributed over frequency. We also simulated such system and and for such system, what we observe is that the bandwidth is proportional to light intensity. And this happens because the circuit is operating in weak inversion. And in weak inversion, the um, transistor conductances are proportional to the drain current. Also, the power spectral density level is inversely proportional to light intensity. And this happens because the circuit, the, the main source noise, is, of noise is shot now. What happens when we integrate the power spectral density over all frequency, which is what we need to do to, to get the noise power, we arrive to the same noise power independently of light intensity. When we see how this looks in time domain, we get noise patterns that when we random we sample noise randomly at a random point in time, we get exactly the same distribution. This is because they all have the same noise power. However, noise generated by them higher, at higher light intensities have much higher frequency components. So because it moves faster, we would expect it to trigger more noise events. 
and when we simulate noise events triggered by these noise patterns, this is indeed what we see. We see much higher noise event rates at higher light intensities. This is then a paradox relative to what we have observed to real DVS outputs, where we clearly see that there is a lot more noise events under lower light intensities. To understand then why there are more noise events under low light intensity, we have done both spy simulations on the photoreceptor and chip measurements at the pixel level. Here we see the RMS noise voltage obtained at the output of the photoreceptor versus photocurrent obtained from spy simulations. We see that the RMS noise voltage is not independent of photocurrent, but it's actually flat up to a threshold photocurrent dependent on the photoreceptor bias, and then it decreases to a new flat level, which is then independent of both the photoreceptor bias and photocurrent. We see a very similar result when looking at chip measurements of RMS noise voltage at the photoreceptor output versus illuminance. The only significant difference that we see is that there's this decrease of um, RMS noise voltage at lower illuminances, but this is because the integration time used for the measurement was not long enough and not because of anything happening in the circuit. To understand this behavior, let's look at the DVS photoreceptor. This circuit is actually not first order, but it is second order with each one of the input and output nodes contributed to with one pole itself. Also, each one of the devices contributes with uh, an independent noise source. This second order behavior is also very clear when you look at the power spectral density obtained from chip measurements. And you see quite clearly that this is a second order and not a first order behavior, and also that at higher, photo, that higher luminances, all lines converge together. And this happens because when the, when the photocurrent increases, the output pole becomes dominant and it fil filters out noise introduced at the input node. This is also clear when we look at, um, at the contribution of photon shot noise, which is the, the noise introduced by um, randomness in photon arrival time at the photodiode versus photocurrent obtained from spy simulations. We see that for lower photocurrents, this contribution is about one quarter of the total noise power. But then as the photocurrent increases, the, um, the contribution of photon shot noise gets filtered out because the, um, the output node becomes, the output pole becomes dominant and it drops to almost zero. To unravel the paradox, we can look at the noise event rate versus luminance obtained from pixel level measurements under the same conditions as the RMS noise voltage versus luminance shown before. What we see is that indeed for lower illuminances, there's a lot more um, noise events and from a um, threshold illuminance, the noise event rate drops very significantly. Then at higher illuminances, we see that um, the, the noise events are consist of only on events and they are due to, to transistor leakage and not shot noise as lower illuminance. This is then the, the explanation for, for the, um, this paradox is that unlike the, the logarithmic photoreceptor, the DVS photoreceptor is a um, second order system and for higher illuminances, the, um, the output pole becomes dominant and filters out noise introduced at the uh, input. Another thing that the measurements show is that increases in the, in the photoreceptor bias cause very significant increases in, in noise event rates, while the increase in RMS noise voltage is not that significant. Note that uh, the um, vertical axis is in log scale here and um, linear scale here. And also, the results show an increase with an increase of noise event rate with illuminance at lower illuminances, even though the RMS noise voltage is expected to be constant. It is then interesting to, to understand this and to uh, quantify noise performance by event rate. And to do so, we have studied a simple model of a first order low pass DVS photoreceptor. And we generated events 
from it. And what we observe is that for, first of all, the, the, noise, the noise event rate is proportional to the cutoff frequency of the photoreceptor and also it depends on the ratio between the event threshold and the RMS noise voltage. And what we see is that for the values of this ratio typically used in, in DBS operation, the, the noise event rate decreases very abruptly with the tail of the Gaussian uh, distribution. It means that very small changes in either the event threshold or the RMS noise voltage cause very big changes in event rate. Uh, this also shows that uh, the noise event rate depends very strongly on the um, RMS noise voltage, but also on, on the frequency distribution of, of noise. I would like to thank all of you for listening, and I leave here a list of useful resources to learn more about DVS noise.